question. Both my diabetic son and non-diabetic son have normal blood sugars and eat low carb. Okay, that's good. My, my non-diabetic son never tests above 90, and my diabetic son has an average uh, meter average of 80 and is rarely above 95. We use freestyle light meters and they are accurate um, and tested against the laboratories. Both boys tested at an A1C of 5.1%. My diabetic son wears a CGM so we know there is no funny business going on when he is sleeping. Why does his A1C, I guess uh, 5.1 is a, about 104 or so, why is that um, not matching the, uh, the freestyle light meter average? Um, okay. Uh, the first of all, uh, you're not getting a continuous reading from the meter, uh, and uh, there are reasons A1C not to reflect average blood sugar. There are many reasons, <laughs> and. Uh, you could find on the internet, uh, if you look up hemoglobin A1C, or glycosylated hemoglobin, or glycated hemoglobin. <clears throat> For example, hypothyroidism can change the uh, A1C value without changing the blood sugar. Uh, hyperthyroidism can do the same uh, probably in the opposite direction. Anemia can uh, affect the hemoglobin A1c. Um, there's just a, a long list of factors that can affect it. So it's not like it's a 100% reliable measure of average blood sugar. And I have a number of patients who complain about their A1Cs. They're using the right meters, and uh, their A1Cs uh, are out of line with the blood sugars on the meters. And uh, in some cases, we know why. In other cases, we don't know why. Uh, it's not that hard a number. Uh, hard in terms of uh, absolute... Uh, Accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's an estimate, and it's best used for for comparing to yourself over time. Okay, that's good advice. But even that can change if your thyroid status changes. Okay. So, uh, this is the story. What I mean, what's the physically? What's the 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 worry? Is the you know that the complications are they coming from the average blood sugar or the complications resulted <coughs> from, resulting from the glycated um, hemoglobin? I mean, what's the what's the number that's going to cause problems um, if they don't correlate? Well, I would I would not go by averages. I would uh, because that makes it harder. Uh, we know that uh, rapidly changing blood sugars increase the rate of complications. We know that uh, a high level blood sugar will increase the rate of complications. Uh, so the game plan should be to have uh, a blood sugar that is steady, if you're lucky, constant, mm -hmm. at the safest possible value. Okay. And if you look at the statistics on non-diabetics, and we've discussed this in prior uh, sessions, uh, it, it appears that somewhere around 83 or 85 milligrams per deciliter for adults yep. is the minimum mortality in non-diabetics. Uh, I would think that because children non-diabetic children run in the 70s and even 60s that that's where they should be because we do know that children get complications and in fact we know that children with high blood sugars uh, don't do as well on intelligence tests don't do as well in school and um, even show 
uh, lack of uh, impaired growth in the brain. Mm -hmm. They also show impaired overall body growth. Mm -hmm. So um, ideally, you want uh, blood sugars that are normal for your age and that are steady at that value.